Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today took a look at a malicious Word document that was submitted by a user. Now, Brad looked at the traffic from that particular document. So basically, he did the dynamic analysis. And now from Xavier today, we do get the static analysis that is actually walking us through the macro being used here. Kind of interesting, the macro first dumps an XSL file and XML style sheet and that actually then contains the code that is being executed. An execution, well, that leads then to additional malware being downloaded, in this case, a version of Quackbot. Also interesting, Xavier's analysis does reveal what appears to be the author's name, Alex Petrenko at mail.ru. And starting in April, which should be Google Chrome 90, the Spanish Certificate Authority, Kama Firma, will likely no longer be included in Google Chrome. We only had a handful of cases like this uh, where Certificate Authorities had been revoked. And Google has documented a number of violations of standards that Certificate Authorities have to comply to with uh, Kama Firma. Whether or not other browser makers will follow Google's lead is still somewhat open. Mozilla is debating currently whether or not they should accept a remediation plan that Kama Firma did present. On the other hand, Kama Firma only issued 8,000 certificates so far, so the impact should be rather minor. And of course, in the past, uh, this entire set of authority ecosystem has been the weak point when it comes uh, to TLS, much more so than any uh, TLS uh, weaknesses in algorithms. And and in recent years, browser makers had attempted to uh, be more stringent with certificate authorities that do violate common required practices. And remember, a couple weeks ago, we had Billy Wilson, a Sans.edu student, talk about security of high-performance computing systems. Well, ESET Security now has a new paper with details regarding a particular threat that they're observing hitting these high-performance computing systems. And ESET is calling this particular backdoor Cobalos. Now, Cobalos is embedding itself in the SH server that's typically running on these systems and setting up a backdoor that will allow access if access comes from a particular source port. In addition, a particular 512-bit RSA key is needed by the attacker to gain access to an infected system. Now, if regular users are connecting to this SH daemon with usernames and passwords, those usernames and passwords are locked. Other interesting tidbit is that uh, apparently reverse analysis of this backdoor was quite complex because it just uh, consists of one single function that recursively calls itself in order uh, to trigger different behaviors. Not really clear, according to ESET, how uh, this backdoor was installed, but uh, they assume that uh, once an attacker gained access to one system and installed the backdoor, they then will collect additional usernames and passwords in order to then propagate the backdoor to other systems. Basic SSH hygiene, like uh, not allowing usernames and passwords and relying on keys only for authentication helps a bit here. Of course, it wouldn't help uh, to prevent the backdoor once it is installed. And ancient Tesla is still learning new tricks. The malware has been around for a while and in its latest version, according 
to a post by Sophos. It does target Microsoft's anti-malware software interface or ASMI. This is an API that's being used by anti-malware to detect and uh, analyze software, for whether it's malicious or not. And what this latest version of Agent Tesla does is it does override the MSI scan buffer procedure, which is used uh, to scan a piece of memory for a malware, so uh, that this particular procedure always returns an error. And as a result, of course, uh, the malware scan will fail and uh, any malware will remain undetected. Pretty neat trick. And of course, it first requires that the initial malware itself runs, but it would then later uh, disable AMSI. And as, for example, signatures such as being updated, you may not detect uh, this malware that is now already on your system. And of course, by not outright disabling uh, the anti-malware, it will still appear like the anti-malware function is actually working and running. Well, uh, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.